Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Tuesday the 27th of August and the weekly market update. And it's been a pretty, um, pretty negative start to this four day week. Um, there's been a lot for investors to really think about. Um, we've had some very poor economic data out of the US. On Friday we had home sales data fall 13.4% in July. Now you can argue about the reasons for that big drop but one of the reasons is undoubtedly the higher mortgage rates that are basically filtering through into the US market as a result of rising bond yields um, um, due to tapering concerns. Um, we also saw durable goods orders for July also fall very sharply in data released this week for July down 7.3%. And that's really factoring in a slightly negative sentiment as we start the week. And it's one of the factors that is weighing on markets. Another one of the factors is obviously concerns about escalating military tensions in the Middle East, namely over Syria and last week's chemical weapons attack on civilian population by um, as unknown counterparties. But uh, I think most people assume that it's the Assad government that basically countenanced this attack. And we're seeing oil prices shoot up now with Brent prices rising to the highest levels since February and WTI prices rising to near to their highest levels this year. Now obviously that is going to raise concerns about demand destruction, essentially meaning higher oil prices weighing on economic growth going forward. Because some of the data that we've seen so far um, over the past month or so has been fairly positive. You look at the UK GDP numbers that came out on Friday, they were revised upwards to 0.7%. And most of the data that's been coming out of the UK has been by and large fairly positive. Also, we've seen a fairly positive economic data coming out of Germany, namely the PMIs last week. We've, we saw them coming better than expected. And we've seen the German IFO come in at 16 month highs earlier today. But behind all of that, there are concerns about an escalation in tensions in the Middle East, Fed tapering concerns, will they, won't they taper in September? Given the recent weakness in economic data, that does now seem in doubt and we could well get some clarity on that later this week when FOMC member James Bullard um, speaks to a couple of audiences on Thursday and then again on Friday. So what are we going to look at today? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to look at the S&P 500 to see whether or not we're going to get any signs of a reversal, whether these concerns about unrest in the Middle East, concerns about growth in the US are going to start to undermine this equity market rally. Also going to be looking at US Treasury yields, given the fact that we saw the 10-year measure rise to 2.93% late last week. Is that, the, is that the upper end of the yields and are we going to see a correction lower? And also going to be looking at dollar yen um, and the effect that the rise and fall in treasury yields is having on that currency pair. So let's start with the S&P 500 and I'm going to start with the weekly chart. Now I've talked about this chart at some length um, with my colleagues on the premium client sales trading desk in the videos that I've done with them, but also in my own weekly videos. And we talked about the bearish weekly candle of a couple of weeks ago, which did seem to suggest that we could see a correction lower. We've since obviously broken below the 1675 level, which I've highlighted with a horizontal line, um, and we continue to trade below that. While we continue to trade below that, there is significant potential for us to move back to the trend line support from the 2011 lows as well as the 200 week moving average because the price action is an awful long way from the 200 week moving average and we do need to correct back towards that level. And any price movement, no matter what it is, at some point has to correct back to its long term average mean. And the S&P 500 has been tra trailing or trading an awful long way from its 200 week moving average. So we need to get some divergence back towards that and close the distance between the two. So that's one part of it. Another part of it is the monthly chart because some of the losses that we've seen this month have pretty much wiped out all of the July gains that we've seen. And if the S&P 500 closes on this monthly chart that I'm putting on the, on the screen right now, if it closes below 1634, 
then we will get a bearish engulfing month and that will be very negative for the S&P 500. Now the end of the month is only on Friday, the end of this week. So we need to keep an eye on that closing level, 1634, that's the level to keep an eye on. If we close anywhere near that, that could potentially be very bearish for the S&P 500. Moving on to US 10-year treasuries. Now this treasury chart that we've got on the screen right now is quite significant in that we've seen a significant rebound of the lows but we've also seen it come off or just fall short of the 3% mark on the basis of a yield play. Now 2.93% was the high in the yields which equates to around about 124.30 on this particular price chart. We've seen a significant bounce back on the price which seems to suggest that we could see an even deeper rebound and let's also not forget the 200 day moving average. I talked about the 200 week moving average on the S&P 500. I'm talking about the 200 day moving average in the context of the distance between the price and the average itself. And again, the price has moved too far away from the 200 day moving average. And that seems to suggest that we could see a short to medium term pullback. Now, whatever the reasons for this drop in bond prices, whether you attribute it to Fed tapering concerns, at some point, whether the Fed tapers or it doesn't, even if it does, they're only going to taper by about five or $10 billion. And that, even of itself, could precipitate a bounce back in US Treasury um, prices. Because since the beginning of May, or the end of May, Treasury yields have gone from 1.6 to 2.9% on the basis of a Fed taper. Well, if they only taper by $10 billion, that's a 1.3% yield play and you're going to get a significant rebound on that because 1.3% certainly doesn't equate to about 10 or 15 billion dollars. So be aware that 3% could be in the short to medium term a cap for US yields. In the context of dollar yen, a fall in US yields, which is what we've seen today, also equates to weakness in the dollar against the yen. Now that for some time, this for some time over the past week has been capped by the Ichimoku cloud resistance around about 98.80 and the trend line resistance from the 103.75 highs currently comes in around about 99.10. While we stay below these two key resistance levels then predominantly downside risk for dollar yen remains and we could well see a move back to the long term trend line low around about 95.60, 95.70. At the moment we are trading sideways in a triangular consolidation at the moment we remain fairly well capped around about 99, while US bond yields remain fairly well capped around about 2.9%, then it's hard to see how dollar yen can go higher. So we need to keep an eye on that resistance level just above 99, while at the same time keeping an eye on the support line coming in around about 95, 60, 70. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this week. Until next week, thanks very much for listening.